Hello and welcome to Disboxing, the place for assistive tech reviews. And today we have an app for you called Read and Write. Now most of you should be familiar with text-to-speech, but if not, please check out our text-to-speech explained video, which should be coming soon. But in a nutshell, text-to-speech reads back articles and documents, allowing you to use your ears as your eyes, making reading a breeze, and creating and checking your own documents a much less painful prospect. And if you're dyslexic like me, you'll know how painful a prospect that can be. Now if you're about to purchase one of these products, you can be forgiven for being overwhelmed by the sheer number of products on the market. So in this video, I'm going to take you through the unique tools and features of read and write. First things first, let's take a look at the interface, which is the main way that you'll interact with the software. And if you take a look, clean and crisp is the name of the game. You can pretty much move the toolbar to anywhere on the screen that you want, but you'll probably want to dock it at the side or the top of the interface. Um, notice how when you dock it at the top, your work area adjusts to make sure you always see the full screen, which is a pretty cool touch. Okay, with a package like this, playback is kind of the main event and as you'd expect, in read and write, just highlight the piece of text you wish to play back and hit the play button. In the mid to late 1990s, I had a thriving practice evaluating and diagnosing a white... As with everything in read and write, the playback voice is highly customizable. If you go to the drop down menu next to the play button and go to speech options, you can see that there's a huge variety of voices and accents. You can change the pitch, speed, volume, gap between words, and even the color of highlight tracking. Another great feature is the dyslexic friendly spell checker. Now this spell checker has been optimized to understand many of the mistakes dyslexic writers make. For instance, it can be quite easy for us to mix up letters that can be reversed or inverted. If I type the word dus, when actually I mean bus, um, if I use the spell checker built into word, it hasn't got a clue. But if I do the same thing with the spell checker that comes with read write, instantly, it knows I was trying to write the word bus. Let's try the word doy when obviously I mean boy. Once again, uh, word doesn't have a clue, but if I go into the spell checker and read write, instantly it knows I'm trying to say boy. Now, a lot of these suggestions may seem quite random, but as I said, this spell checker is optimized for the dyslexic and gives them the most relevant options available. Think of word prediction as a real-time spell checker. What this tool does is it analyzes the word that you're trying to write, and when you fall into trouble, it will offer up suggestions of the word you were most likely to spell. Now, the way that I like to use this tool is to have it open while I'm typing, and uh, it's there just in case I have trouble. So if I write the sentence, for instance, we have been to the... So I don't know how to spell pharmacy, but I'll type the first couple of letters and instantly if you look at number seven it's pharmacy I press F7 and I can carry on what I'm typing a great thing about the word protection in read write is it remembers how you write so it will offer up the words you use most regularly and a great way to use this is if you have to write really long sentences or titles um, you can use the hotkeys in the word prediction to write whole sentences so for instance this is something that I may have to write quite often so reinforcement learning and multi-dimensional thinking so I wrote that whole sentence just by pressing the F1 key and you can see how that can really speed up your workflow. Now as well as helping you create and comprehend your documents, Read and Write has a few tools that will help you with your research. The first is Fact Folder, which will help you automate your source material. Now, as you can see, I've just been doing some research for my awesome blog post about cats, um, and I've got a few tabs open uh, in Wikipedia. So using Fact Folder, I can grab the information that I want to check, this seems good, and then go to Fact Folder. What that will do is open up the interface. Now, it gives me a few options to add a little bit more information about the content that I'm getting. So it's about ragdoll cats, i put that in there. It's on the 30th of January, that's fine. Uh, the author is Wikipedia. Uh, the category is cats. And what I like to do is just cut and paste the URL, just so if I need to get back to it, I know where I got that source material from. So if I click OK, that will go into the ether and into my fact folder. Now I've done that with all the others already. So if I click on fact folder and go to review facts, the interface will pop open 
and allow me to start compiling that information. Now I've been doing quite a bit of research but all I want is the stuff I've done about cats and I'll bring up the four sources that I took from Wikipedia earlier. I'll click all four of those and then I will export that to Word. Ask me what bibliography, I'll go for Harvard and that will create a document out of all of that. So it doesn't need to be done in one session, you could be doing this over weeks and rather than opening up the document and cutting and pasting, you can just do this and everything's saved. As you can see what I've got is all of my content in one place. Uh, it's also got inf the information I put in there, so Bengal cats, it's got the URL, it's from Wikipedia and the date. So all of those things that if I need to go back to that content or make a bibliography, it's all there rather than me thinking, ah, where did I get that quote from? So now you've done the research, you need to make some sense of it. And we could go through this document and cut and paste all of the relevant pieces of information. But if you've got a big project or lots of documents, that can be quite time consuming. So one way around that is to use the study skills highlighters that are built into Read Write. So if I go through this information, the first piece is about Siamese cats. So I can highlight the paragraph here, highlight that yellow and paragraph here. We'll use yellow for all the Siamese cats. And then for the, what cats were these? Bengal cats, I can highlight a piece here, we'll make that blue. And then another piece here, which is useful. And then we'll go down and we'll look for Norwegian forest cats. We'll take a paragraph from there and a paragraph from Ragdoll cats. So instead of cut and pasting those individually into another document, I can now just collect highlights, order highlights by colour, click OK, and as if by magic, a document is created with all of those pieces of information and a bibliography of the documents that they came from. So remember, you can do this over multiple documents and compile that all into one document at the click of a button. So those are the unique features of Read and Write, but remember this is just the tip of the iceberg. And if you look around this package, you'll find things like visual dictionaries, mind mapping, visual stress aids, I mean the list goes on, there's just too much to put in one video. But keep an eye out for our tips and tricks videos which will rarely show you how to integrate all of the tools in Read and Write into your existing workflow. So make sure you subscribe to be kept in the loop and you'll know as soon as we upload new videos. But in conclusion, if you're looking for a text-to-speech package which is rarely comprehensive and highly customizable then read and write is probably something that you want to check out but for now i've been sean douglas this is this boxing and i'll see you next time